All right, so we are going to jump back into os our osmosis and diffusion nodes. Hopefully you are not missing me too much today. Um, your labs are all set up and ready to go. Um, hopefully you'll get some good data today. Um, so we're going to start and um, we're going to go through these notes. And I am also planning on put the, putting these on YouTube. So if for some reason I'm going too fast, you're welcome to the, tell the sub um, to pause. But if that still doesn't get you where you need to be, um, MBHS AP Bio, all one word there. If you search that on YouTube, I'm planning on putting up these notes there as well so you can go back through them and then if you have any questions before your final you need to make sure you come see me for with those as well all right so we'll go ahead and jump in here so everything we've talked about so far is passive those are forms of tra passive transport we talked about facilitated diffusion diffusion and osmosis so the reason their passport is passive is because they go from a high concentration to low concentration. So because they're going with the concentration gradient, because they're going down the slide there, it doesn't take energy to make that happen. Okay, so it's moving with the concentration gradient. All right, so today we're going to jump into active transport. All right, so our active transport is going to be when we go against the concentration gradient. And so we're going from where there's a lower concentration gradient to an area of higher concentration gradient. So you've got to think if you were to try to climb up a slide, it's going to be a lot more difficult. You're going to have to put in some energy to make it up to the top. So when you go from low up to high, that's going to require an input of cellular energy there. So ATP is going to be needed somehow. All right, so today we're going to look at endocytosis, exocytosis, and we're going to zoom in and talk on about um, another example called the sodium potassium pump. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Okay, this first thing is, first example is exocytosis. So when I think of exocytosis, I think of exit. All right, so this is a form of active transport. This is when things are going to exit the cell. So things are leaving the cell. So whatever is leaving the cell, there is actually more on the other side. All right, so... It doesn't naturally want to flow this way. It's going to require some energy to move this out. All right, so what happens here? We've got a vesicle. Okay, that vesicle, maybe it came from the Golgi body. It is going to fuse with the plasma membrane here. And then the product is going to be released out of the cell. All right, so exocytosis. So because it's going against the concentration gradient, energy is going to be required to make that happen. All right. Our next example is endocytosis. This like we said, it's also a form of active transport, so it's going to require energy. This time, um, we're getting things into the cell. So when I think of endocytosis, I think into the cell. All right, so the outside of the cell, inside of the cell, there's actually going to be more of whatever we're looking at inside the cell. So we've got to go against the concentration gradient to bring in this molecule because um, it's going to be... Um, not want to, going to want to flow that way naturally. All right. So we have this molecule, and then we're going to wrap the cell membrane around here, and then we'll bring it in and form the vesicle. All right. So this vesicle is going to bring it into the cell. 
All right, so endocytosis, like we said, we had a vesicle and that's going to be brought into the cell. Okay, so it's going to allow the cell to absorb molecules that are going to be too large for channel proteins. All right, remember we talked about the channel proteins um, and how they were used in facilitated diffusion since some things just couldn't easily pass through the membrane. All right, so there's also different types of endocytosis. So we're going to be talking about two different types. The first one is phagocytosis. And I'll give you a second to write here. Okay, so like we said before, you know, because we're bringing the N against, going against the concentration gradient, it's going to be active transport. So phagocytosis, I think of phagocytosis like cellular eating. Okay, so this would be one cell adjust, ingesting another, for example. It doesn't have to be one cell ingesting another. Um, it could be like molecules ingesting being ingested by a cell. Okay, but for an example, an amoeba engulfing a paramecium. Another thing would be um, our immune system cells. Our immune system cells use this when they are engulfing, like our white blood cells are engulfing um, bacteria. So they'll use phagocytosis to surround it and bring it in so they can destroy it. All right, so that's cellular eating. Then we have the penocytosis. This is also considered cellular drinking. Okay, so same idea where we bring things into the cell, um, forming the vesicle, but this time we're focusing on liquids or dissolved substances. All right, then we have a special kind of endocytosis called receptor-mediated endocytosis. All right, so with this, it works just a little differently, and the idea is that it's trying to find specific things. All right, so like we know so much of the time that shape and function go together. So shape is, once again, really important because... Um, we have these receptors that are going to bind with whatever we're trying to bring in. So, for example, what they call it the, the passenger molecule. All right, so it's focusing on bringing in certain cells into the cell, or certain molecules, sorry, into the cell. So we have this receptor protein. This shape is going to match up with the passenger molecule. So those are going to bind, and they're going to bring them in into using a vesicle. All right, so it's a receptor mediator because we're using a receptor protein. All right, so you can see here an overall summary of what's going on with the concentration gradients in our different types of transport. All right, so we have when we have higher concentration outside compared to inside, all right, so we're moving into the cell with the concentration gradient um, because these are going from where there's more to where there's less. Going down that concentration gradient slide, that's gonna be, these are gonna be passive, all right, and we have just diffusing through the lipid bilayer, and some of them require that channel protein, and then those are gonna be um, facilitated diffusion. All right, and then we have our active transport. So it's going to require our ATP molecule since we're trying to shove everything in where it's already full. Okay. I also think about that when I think about active transport. I think about if you had a closet full of shoes, you just really love shoes, and you have you just bought two new pairs, or hey, you just bought two new pairs of shoes. If you were trying to get them into your closet that's already full of shoes, 
how difficult is that going to be? You have to really shove everything in there. So you're going to, it's going to take you a lot of energy to open that door, shove those shoes in, and then shut the door again without anything falling out, right? So that's kind of how I think about active transport. It's going to take a lot of energy to go from where there's less to where there's more. All right, and then our last type of active transport is the sodium potassium pump. So this is just a specific type of looking at um, moving sodium molecules out and potassium in. All right, so this pump, like we said before, is going to move two potassium ions into the cell and then it's going to move two sodiums, or sorry, three sodium ions out. So these are both moving against their concentration gradient. So because of that, it's going to require energy. Um, this picture isn't exactly accurate because this process happens all at once. Right, so we have things moving in and out at the same time. So it's not a perfect system there. All right, so this is our overall idea of what's going on with um, active and passive transport. And remember the big overall purpose of this, the thing that we really need to remember is why we are doing this. Why do our cells care about what moves in and out of the cells and how it happens? And the biggest thing for this is we have to maintain homeostasis. And to maintain homeostasis, we've got to have things diffusing in and out. Um, and sometimes it's against their concentration gradient and sometimes we have to use ATP to make that happen. So hopefully this gives you a good broad perspective of what's going on here and you will be ready for your final and like i said before let me know if you have any questions and i will try to put this up on youtube for you good luck with the rest of your lab have a good day